did you f put the switch in yourself? Yeah. Good for you. Don't tell anyone though, right? <laughs> well, I understand from what you were saying, what Robo was saying on your code. Yeah. But no, you, I knew you could do it. Yeah. I mean, only an idiot would forget to unplug it from the wall before they tried it. And I know you're not an idiot. <laughs> Gee, you don't know him very well then, Bob. <laughs> That's why I laughed. <laughs> Uh, idiots don't have the sense of humor idiots don't have the concentration and i don't know of a single idiot that could start from total scratch in the shortest time you have to do really nice work with tools that could kill you someone someone donated twenty dollars to my paypal account the other day to me. Okay. After, my, after my switch incident <laughs> wasn't me no, it was Blair. All oh, right. It tells me. <laughs> oh yeah. PayPal tells me. Did right now, it, it takes three days for it to post before you can spend it. Yeah, five days it takes to get to my account. Yeah. Oh. Now, screw that in and out of the thing to make sure it screws in and out. All right. Yeah. Now, just be careful of the thread. I think it's a left-hand thread on those. Yeah. Make sure it screws right in. Yep. Right. Now, has it got a little burr on the end of the, the screw-in shaft? Where the, where, no, right, at, right where your index finger is. Right on the end there. Has it got a burr... Has it got a burr on the outside? Only from what the um, uh, punch put in it. Right. Well, dry, take, unscrew it again. Yeah. Wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Nearly everybody does it, Jay. <laughs> I might give the thread another clean now. Yeah, that's that's why I got you to screw it in there, because it cleans it out much better than anything else. You know uh, what I found really is handy, and you guys probably get them easier or cheaper, is to get, and I forget what size, but a, a shotgun cleaning brush. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, a, um, like a bottle brush. Yeah. Well, well, it's a brass type brush, so it won't hurt the threads, and you can like screw it in and out because it's just a little bit bigger, but it's still a brush, and it gets the threads really well. And I got tired of screwing it in and out, so I'm lazy. I put it in my electric drill. It goes in, it reverses it, and it comes out, in and out, to get all the stuff that is stuck in the thread itself. Right. It's bloody hard to get off that last little bit. You might need it just some very fine sandpaper. Now, all right, just uh, get that, get it clean first. If anyone's in the background, they're just going to have to message. And yeah. It does uh, actually pop up on my screen, the private messages, but only for a second or two. So if I miss it. Oh, Blair's backstage. All right. I don't, I have no idea how you can get private messages or send private messages. Uh, no, it's on the it's on the chat. chat. He must have left top chat and uh, live chat. Yeah, That's the only two I see. 
Oh, no, no, it's in the StreamYard chat, Dr. It's in the StreamYard. Okay. On the StreamYard page, and there's a, a for, for a computer, there's options okay. on the right hand side. It. Yep. My, my tablet, it's underneath. <laughs> I'll tell you a trick on what you're doing is I put the sandpaper on a piece of wood, and then I take and uh, uh, I've nearly got it. Yeah, I, no, I used just to that. hold it down over it and then move it. That way, I don't round any of it over. Yeah. Oh, I just don't. I don't want to get too much in the in the thread there by putting it over uh, the top like that. It's all right. We're going to clean it all anyway, so it'll rinse out. Have you got a, a tablet or something on, have you, Bob? I keep hearing myself yeah. every now and again. Oh, uh, I got my headphone on. Let me. I put my phone on to follow chat, but that's. Yeah, that's you'd need all. to just need to mute the phone, that's all. I did. Good. Otherwise, you're hearing my hollow head. My sister always told me it was hollow. Oh, well. <laughs> That's what sisters are for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Never had one, so I wouldn't know. That's all I've got. Well, she's stuck her head in to watch, but I don't know what name she uses now and then. It usually... I haven't seen it, but she wouldn't say anything, but I was mentioning you to her, and she said, yeah, I've seen him down in Australia. Her, her dis description of Robo. <laughs> uh, angry young man. No, you're, you're, you're perfect for a government employee. You know what you want, what you say is correct, and you'll show someone what it's about, and you get pissed when they do it wrong after you've shown them. So you have to have been some sort of educator. No, I think I'm too sensible for a bloody government official, I tell you. <laughs> well, Joy English popped up to watch you clean your leg. How you going, Joy? Good day, Joy. Now, that what piece comment? is called a quill, is it not, Robo? Yes, it is, yeah. What did I say? But no. I don't know. I didn't hear. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a goldfish memory. Joy lasts about three or four seconds. After that, I, I don't remember. Right. Now, on that quill there, Jay, yeah, have a yeah. look where you grabbed it with the Stilsons and see if yeah. there's any marks at all on it. From the Stilsons, all right. Particularly on the, particularly on the keyway, which is the cutout bit. See that? Yeah. Is there any marks on it? Yeah, that little groove right there. Yeah. All right. That might be all right. It may not. Just get your sandpaper and just sand it. All right. All right. Just even them out a bit. What I have is a file that happens to fit the width of it. So I'll put the file in to take the burrs out. Yeah. I don't know where they come from. You know, well, we know we know, we know where they we know where they came from on this one because it was that hard to get out. Oh, we had to right. use a pair of Stilsons yeah. to undo it. It is so nice to hear the wrench call by its real name. Oh, I'm a motor mechanic. <laughs> Ex-motor mechanic. No sharp edges on it now, Joy? Joy? 
No, I'm just going to keep going. It is getting rid of it. Good. So, yeah, don't take it down. Here, don't though. take it down too far. Yeah. Also, too, right? I don't know how these ones got in there, but there's actually notches like two yeah, down that's, here, one either yeah, side. Right. That's that's caused by your spindle lock. The um, and it, it's where you loosened it right off and allowed it to slip over the top of it. Yeah. Right. Hey, so Joy, just so yeah. So you want me to try and sand that back a bit too? Yeah, just sand them back a bit too. All right, Joy. Can you do me a favor, please, and read the title of this live? <laughs> Can't just some required maintenance of a lathe right now. And what gets me is the fact that I have had more people that I know I've cleaned their lathes and showed them how. And I have to totally lost count. It's got to be in a good hundred or more. And they're afraid to take it apart. But yet, they're auto mechanics that will rebuild an engine. And it makes no sense. I wouldn't begin to try to rebuild something that complicated. But, oh, it's easy. Ah. Engines are <laughs> easy. They won't, they won't do... Change, they won't... Clean a quill. Uh, Mike's, Mike's in as well. And keep squirting oil in. Mike's in as well, Joe. Well, wait on, wait on, wait on, Joy. I can't go full screen. I'm busy. On they're, they're, no, that's all right. They are, there's a wooden handle. Has that fixed it for you? <laughs> the other problem I find that turners do um, when it comes to the tailstock and quill assembly is the set screw on the wheel. Most quills have a flat spot for that to fit in. Yeah, well, that's what this one, yeah, that's a key way. You know, to guide it in and out, a key way, but they don't, don't try to fix it. Or, mm. And the key way itself is, mm -hmm. a, well, on a lot of ways, it's a physical key that sits in there. But I don't think um, I don't think I'll be sending this back in any now form. Now it's so. just a, a set screw. Sorry, just hold on a second, Bob. What was that, Joe? I don't think I'll be sanding this fully back because it's too close to where it starts to go up there. Yeah, no, that'll be all right. That's fine. Okay, right now, get that threaded bit again, please. Yeah. Right. Now, where the wheel fits on, yeah, where your hand wheel fits on, where you're holding it there, yeah, uh, just drop it down a little bit. You're off the camera, right? That's better. Now, see right at the extreme end there. Yeah. Run your fingers up there and see if there's a little bird, the thing that may have held the wheel on. All right, when you're trying to get it off. Oh yeah. Is there a bird there or not? Well, maybe, it, maybe it, I don't know. Maybe it was just caught on that. Well, I don't know, but... Um, no bird, though. Okay, right. What I'd suggest you do is dry that off. Yeah. And then go over to your grinder yeah. and grind grind a little bit of a chamfer around that end, all right? Yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you want me to make it... You want it, you want it to kind of curve in on the ends. Yeah, just yeah. A, a small chamfer, that's all it needs. Yeah, all right. How you going, Blair? Good. I was actually Good. in earlier, and I was sitting backstage for probably about five minutes, and then I jumped yeah, over went, to John C. And then I went to let you in, and you weren't there. <laughs> you were there. You were there for three minutes. All right. <laughs> three, five. Because the time came up, you see. <laughs> 
You can't fool me. <laughs> what, what did he tear apart? Uh, Tile Stalker. The, oh. Exactly what the title of the live is called. Yeah, I didn't see that. Cleaning the tail stock. Right, just chance for that off, Shay. Jay? Jesus. Calling me Joy, calling me Shay. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, just, just to be lucky I'm talking at all. Hi, Mike. Hi, Joy. Good day, Chris. And Effie. Effie, Chris. Yeah, that's good, Jay. Excellent. Rightio. Now, make sure there's no burrs around that flat spot where the wheel sits in. Oh, you mean in here? Yeah, on the edges of it. It may need a little bit of sanding off. They sometimes raise up a little bit. It looks like it's got a little bit of crap in there. Yeah, all right. We'll sand that off. Just nice and gently. How you going, Effie? Yeah, it was just a bit of... Uh a bit of grease and some shape, a couple of filings. Yeah, that's all right. Some of those filings could well be left over from when it was machined. They never, yeah, they never, they never clean machines out real good. Some of them, the Chinese, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now get your hand wheel, and yeah. see if that slides on and off nice and easily. All right. Oh well, firmly. I might give that a bit of a clean first. Yeah, we'll give the hand will a clean. Oh, half your luck, Effie. Effie just said she's waking up from a nap. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What have you been up to, Blair? Um, I was out uh, screwing around on my lathe for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, went and played some video games, and here I am. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Uh, Effie said she had to get one so that, so she could join us. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that a rattle? Nice. What do you put in it? BBs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been busy on something similar. Oh, show it. it oh, there it is. Oh, that's right. fine. Just... Have a look down it and see if there's any burrs or anything down it, Jay. I reckon it's I reckon it's like right on the right on the lip here. All right. right now, grind up, huh? yeah, just grind gently. Just grind that edge off a little bit. All right. Yeah. Very oh. gently.
Just wipe it down before you try and put the wheel back on it. Beautiful. That's the way it should fit right. Now it should rotate around the shaft without... Yeah, that's beautiful. Good. What happens is people let the grub screw come loose and then they tighten the tail stock up all the time and they, the little grub screw is as hard as the hobs of hell and yeah. it dints the the steelwork on the edge and just locks it in like a key. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that before on stone stuff, yep. Rightio, okay. Now, dry off your, your quill and everything and put all that aside and then get your tail stock body and start cleaning that out. I got a problem with our dog, Riley. He likes what? to bark. He's friendly all the time with people. Except that uh, a neighbor of mine who block away but still know him, he would cut down an apple tree. And he said he'd get me some wood. And every time Riley, someone's around the yard or he hears him outside, he's always jumping and barking. But, you know, as a bulldog, that's kind of neat because people don't want to come in if they see that. But if you're carrying a log, he just doesn't care. Just let him in. He, he doesn't know the person. He never met him. <laughs> but he was carrying the log in, open the gate. Now, we can have the gates open and he won't walk away. He'll come good out. Good night, Lewis. No, hey, Lewis. Chris. Chris? Oh, is that Lewis as well? Yeah. Yeah, Chris All is right. in too. Yeah, sorry. How you going, Chris and Lewis? Yeah, Audi. I just couldn't believe you carry a log and the, the bulldog lets you in. <laughs> I only got to worry when they start taking things out and the dog lets them go. <laughs> well, if it's wood, anything else, he would probably really get upset. But every time that I've got people that, and propane tanks, you can carry a propane tank and he wouldn't bark at you. Right. I've got some people that are friends that will pick up my empties and get them filled for me. No, you're going to need that, Jay, probably to clean out the inside of that other thing, so I'll leave it in there. I'm just rinsing it out of it. <laughs> it's um, Effie, not Eddie. Lewis? I was, I was going up the chat looking for Eddie, and I thought I might have missed somebody. And then I really yeah. woke up. Yeah. Yeah, tonight. Right. Now, this is, this is, right on, sorry, Bob. This is the one that really needs cleaning out, Jay. Yeah. Mm. Right. While you're doing that, I'm going to make a cup of tea, all right? Yeah. <laughs> what are you using for a cleaner, Jay? Tips. Okay. Yeah. I went to my local hardware store and uh, bought some uh, Allen keys because I needed them to open up the tail stock handle. And uh, then I get home and I couldn't couldn't get it off, so I got Robbo in a. Uh, a private stream so we could sort he could show me what I need to do and um and then he said you know you need some turps have you got any of that <laughs> I was like, uh, no yeah, crap so I went back <laughs> and got it it's only like a K up the road so it's not that bad oh, okay at least it's not 40 minutes away right 
No, nah, yeah, that's right. But that's a standard product used to maintain part of the wave. You just have to get used to it and have it somewhere. You don't need it all. Well, I go over my lathes once a month. Maybe this clean out I'm doing may suggest I'll suggest I've never done it. <laughs> How long have you had Most that? Most people lead? don't know about it. Um, I've had it. Uh, shit. A year and a half. Oh, Surprises me you've already gone through that many switches and having that many problems with it. Well, it's not too bad. I, you know, honestly, I thought I would have killed the motor by now, to be honest. But. Well, and granted, you do use it every day. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I use mine at least six days a week it's about the only thing that's really lacking is the torque you know yeah yeah in my life today mine was starting to bog down too it's starting to make me angry yep oh i um i cloth tape my uh this board to the lathe bed so i don't have to worry about it being unbalanced or my fat belly hitting it and knocking it off <laughs> that's good it's mainly belly proof if anything <laughs> <laughs> well i've done that a better hit for you find a piece of wood and huh? cut it down so it fits between the bedways with about a sixteenth of an inch to spare. Oh, and yeah. Screw it to your work. Screw it to the piece of wood you have now you're using as a work table. But screw yes. it to the bottom side if one side is better than the other. Uh, okay. That way you just sit in the bedways and it stays there and it, it, it fits fairly tight. You have to have just lift it up and down straight, but if you lift it up by the edge it, on the side of the bedways, that way you can, at least with me, with my big belly, when I had it, I'd come up and try to reach something of the other Yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> I don't know any stuff. I'm not wood, knocked off. Wouldn't strip your anchor to the center with. It, it has to fit snow. Put off. Use an old rug, a uh, piece of uh, rug from a, a floor, and cut it out and put it on with duct tape all the way around. So I have a rug, a soft surface, so I can sit stuff on it. And when it's all messed up, I pull it off and put another piece on. Yep. But that to me is the work table. You turn your bedway into a really decent work table. The other thing I always check on is, and I have, don't know if your robo is going to have you do it, but when you turn the tailstock over to make sure that the bottom of it is yeah, really clean the, smooth. That was the first bit I cleaned. Yeah, because you want it to slide easy. If it yeah. has some slight ridges or something, that'll pick up the dirt and everything and make it harder to move back and forth. Yes. No, I agree. Yeah, well, no, I'm and going to do the banjo both. the same way. I always take the banjo off and flip it over and make sure that the bottom of it is such that it slides easy because that's a pain if you can't adjust it with one hand. Because there are times, at least for me, I just want to make a quick adjustment. In one hand, it's easy to do. Thank <laughs> you. 
I even go so far as on the bottom of the banjo as I have taken a diamond card to it to that I've borrowed from a friend of mine, a machinist, fairly good size, a card just went over that bottom so as it, it slides really easy. And people say, oh, but then it won't lock down. Well, no, it's that little disc underneath <laughs> of the banjo that pulls up against the bottom is what locks it down. That's where yep. your friction is. Right. Now, was there much garbage inside there, Joe? Yeah, that's what I'm just getting out here. There's a fair bit around here. I, I just, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I just had a jar underneath of it. Yeah. I was pouring the liquid down through it, so. Right. Get a screwdriver. Yeah, and a rag. No, no, get a screwdriver and just put it up from the other end and see if you can scrape the grease out. It'll be packed grease probably. If you got a screwdriver long enough, or even that cold chisel that you had the had before, that'll do. This thing. Yep. Poke it in from the other end. So that is a good question. Do you have any grease? No, don't put grease in them. No, I already asked him that this morning and he said no. Strange as it may seem. Joe, you look lost. <laughs> no, I was just getting sore in my hand, my arm, that's all. Oh, right. I've got a, a long piece of cloth, I'm going to feed it through it. No, I'll feed it in from the other end. The, feed it in the bigger end, and then start, so if you can pull it through the smaller end. Just push it through with your knockout bar. Nearly got it all through and it stopped. <laughs> yeah, I'll just pull it out. It'll have got most of the crap out of there. He's gonna get. He's gonna get Amber to do it. She's stronger. <laughs> You got it. Right. Now, get the quill yeah. and see if it slides up and down inside the housing there nice and easily. Right. Make sure you put it in the right way round.
No, so right. It all the way? It should go all the way in, yeah. Yeah, that seems, still seems to be a bit tight. All right, just get you threaded. Oh, you can't do that from that side now. Um, just see if you can pull that out. <laughs> no, don't knock it, just push. Don't don't thump it, just push it. You should be able to push it out if you put it in there. Get your Stilsons and just put it on the nose of the quill again and twist it out, all right? I'll try here a little bit more. I really don't feel like sanding it anymore. Sorry, I couldn't understand that. I said I'll try from here a little bit more. I don't feel like sanding it, but I'm not having much of it. It's a mute button. <laughs> He's going to say a few uh, choice words, I'm sure. Uh, that helps a great deal sometimes in a situation yeah. like this. Really does. Even if you talk sweet to it, sometimes that works great. Oh, yeah. Surprised it's that, that rough in there. Yeah. Uh, that should be, things should be floating. Exactly. No, the Stilsons only work one way, Jay. How about um, putting that ramrod in the back and then just giving the ramrod a thump? You can't. You can, the knockout bar or anything won't fit without the screw. It'll just fall into the screw thread, and you're likely to damage the screw thread. Wow. Uh, gotcha. I was going to say, if it's got a little ridge in there, you can put it on that little ridge and just give it a thump. How's it going, Joe? Right. See if you can twist and pull at the same time on the Stilsons. <laughs> He's talking Italian to me now. Trying to work that out, Mike, that putting a two inch washer on top of the locking space and makes those mini loads. I've never had any trouble with them because I'd, I must admit I just adjust them properly, but.
How's it going, Joy? Bob's, oh, might just have to wait a minute, Dr. Bobby's uh, closed it down for a minute. Now here, here's a question for all you others. This this was an actual traffic report from a major Australian FM radio station, right? Now listen carefully. Got a bingle out in Brody. Toe's on site, but as a result, it's chockers in that direction. Do you all know what that means or not? Speaking French to me. Dr. Bob says no as well. What about what about you Englishmen over there? That's a typical Australian phrase, believe it or not. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's got it. He's a pom, so he should know. <laughs> Crash ad tailback? Yeah, no, I'll tell you in a minute. It's a term that we don't use out here, but... Right, what it means is there's been a crash at Broadway. Tow trucks are on site, but there is a massive traffic jam out there. So avoid all costs. <laughs> yeah, the English the English call it a tailback when there's a traffic jam. It, Jeez, Joe might have cracked it, really cracked it. Maybe. Didn't seem like to put it in there that hard to have it grip that much. Yeah, I'm quite surprised actually. Must be... Must have a burr or something down inside it from old metal. When we when we pulled it apart, a heap of metal shavings came out of there. Yeah, that's not good. And it took it took a quite an effort to get it out. How did the screw assembly look? Did it look like it was worn out or? Oh no, no, that's that's uh, it's it's fine. Yeah, good day, Mel. How are you? We're just waiting on Jay to either come back or whatever. Yeah, 
That's another term I don't understand. Chuck the wobbly. Means does your lolly. Your temper. <laughs> Lost your temper. Chuck the wobbly. <laughs> God, we're really baffling you Yanks today, aren't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> Done a dummy spit. Yeah, that's another one. What, you've never heard dummy spit? Dummy spit, uh-uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another one. There's another one as well, which I won't say. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Dunny's Nana. That's another one. Dunny's Nana. Dunny's Nana. No, not in Australia, Bob. It, oh, well, some some things do, but um, uh, generally most of the slang is understandable right around Australia. It's pretty common right throughout Australia. Could be on a dog and bone. Oh, I'm waiting for a Facebook message or something to come through to find out what Jay's doing. Maybe you just just said uh, hell with it and left us alone. No, I thought I saw the, I thought I saw the the Stilsons fly across the workshop. So the Stilsons. Yeah. Pipe wrench. Correct. Eh? Pipe wrench. Pi Pipe wrench. Yeah, pipe wrench, proper name, Stilson's. Never heard pipe of Pipe wrench. And Stilson's actually is a brand name. It's like Aspro for for meaning uh, any analgesia, uh, any pain killing pill like Panadol, Panadine, Nurofen. So, so even when you say that, I mean that that's so foreign to me. Sorry. The Panadol, that kind of stuff. I have no idea what that would do. Well, they're, they're analgesics, headache tablets. Mm. But they, out there, they're called Aspros because Aspro was a, a brand name, was the first one around, so everybody just. I need an Aspro, it could mean a Panadol, Panadine, uh, four or five different sorts of things. See over here, it's either Tylenol or Ibuprofen. Yeah, yeah, or a Bex. I don't think you can buy Bex anymore, can you? Mel, that used to be the thing if you... If you're feeling crook, yeah, take two backs and have a lie down. That and aspirin. Yeah, well, as aspirin, uh, that's, it was called Aspro out here. I don't think anybody takes aspirin anymore. 
not here anyway. Uh, you generally find that most heart attack victims take aspirin. Yeah, that's true. If they take baby aspirin like every day, it helps the blood and all that. Yeah. Except I found, I think I found in recently that uh, it's probably a bad thing. Everything's a bad thing. Breathing's a bad thing. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Jeez, everything gives you cancer or gives you this, gives you that. Even if you lock yourself inside, you bug it. Right. Because well, the carpet you know, the will kill you. The one thing is, is we're not going to get out of this, this world alive, so. No, dead right. It's the one thing that's guaranteed, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Joy swearing. Mm. What are you swearing about, Joy? Oh, jeez, bummer. Uh, you better take a Bex and have a lie down. Oh. Yeah, that happens to me quite a bit too. Stupid dog gets around my feet and... Yeah, the worst thing, worst, thing, worst thing about dogs is they lie in the doorway. You go to step over the top and the buggers stand up just after you get one foot across. And you end up on your neck. Ah, uh, somebody else's dog. Uh, that's not good, Joy. Oh, maybe he's, maybe he needs a doctor's bill sending to him then. Well, it depends on the the drugs you're on, Joy. You're cranky. If you're on on the good, better drugs, you don't care. 
I just go and spray something with it and see lacquers and feeling good then. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should chuck a wobbly as well. <laughs> Make it a trifecta. Yeah, well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. Tell you what, I'm I'm gonna jump out. If he uh, comes back on, have him message me. Yeah, um, I'm thinking of doing the same. So, hey, I'll, here. Good luck, man. Yeah, all right. Okay, see I'll see you later, Blair. See you later, everybody. Bye, guys. Uh, if he comes back on, I'll open it back up again. What happened? Why did everyone jump out? Uh, bye. Uh, Robo left and Bob Dr. Bob left and he was sitting in the background but I couldn't let him in because my computer's having a bit of a freak out at the moment. Uh, so I'm trying to close stuff on my drive. Hey. It will work again. There I am. Yeah. yeah, we didn't know what was going on because... Well, when, when I throw my mask down and it hits the power cord for my computer, what generally happens when the computer has no power? And well, it it, I, I it haven't it restarted it. For, I haven't restarted it for about a month, so it did about a thousand updates, and it did two more restarts after that. That should teach you a lesson. No, you gotta, you you gotta keep it turned on and off at least once a day to do updates and let it clean its memory out. No, no, I've got most of the update stuff turned off. Just the important stuff. And it, and it has to ask me first too. Too many times I've had uh, had Windows paid for Windows, and then they've done something and it's corrupted the system. But then I've got to go and pay for another Windows. It's like no, I'll now stop keep, the updates and I'll update what I wanted to update. Just the net. You don't net keep your key. Stuff. Sorry. Had, uh, you need to write your key down. Windows, and then your license key. Up system but then i've got to go and pay um, for who's got that running that you robo stop updates and i'll update what i wanted to update just the net you know, yep, it's got to be mine's off yep. you need to write your key down turn your can you turn your youtube or something off please um, who's got that running that you robo yeah possibly yeah possibly Yeah, sorry about that. I I went round looking for you. My computer restarted. Oh right. I hit, I hit the power cord with the mask, and uh, and like I just said to Doctor Bob, I haven't, I don't, I don't turn this computer off because I don't have a need to. It's just, it's just got the lives on it, and that's it. And yeah. uh, anyway, 
it had a thousand updates and a thousand restarts to go with it. So oh. I just sat back. I got I got this out. I just sat sat back and started sanding this. Right. No, I don't think it's that, Jay. I think oh, I'm it's. Getting, uh, I'm getting the Stilston marks out of it. <laughs> oh right. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Now. Run your finger, if you can, right to the end of the tail stock and see if there's anything up there, like a burr or a, a, a mark. Yeah, I must admit that's why I switch automatic updates off on my computers. It actually, um, it goes down to... It goes about three quarters of the way down, and then it, it gets fatter. It actually changes diameter and gets fatter. But it feels, uh, you can see where they can feel it, where they've machined it. Right. Um, what you're going to have to do, get a bit of dowel or something. No. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, I've got a round file. No, don't, don't get a file in there. See if you can get a bit of sandpaper on your finger mm. and just rub it up and down the the barrel there to see if it'll come clean. There's got to be something that's stopping it from going back. It's going to be a pain in the bum, but... Oh, well, the one thing about it, Joy, that'll boost the iron if you're eating junk tonight. Keep the pressure right down the far end if you can, Joe, towards where the hand wheel goes. Yeah. I just texted Blair. Hi. Oh, yeah. Good. Can you get a, have you got a little torch or something you can have a look down in there with? Yeah, it's what's shining on here. I can see that's down a, it. That's another one of those flames. you want to see I down it? Sorry, sorry, Dr. Bob. What was that, Jay? Do you want to see down it? No, I need you to see down it, see if there's a, a score mark or something down it. No, the the word torch, that's something I had I couldn't figure out in Nam until finally I got clued into it. Ah, well, you Americans call it flashlights, I think. Yep. Or lanterns, yeah. but a flashlight, yeah. Yeah. Can you feel anything down in there, Jay, or not? Well where where it changes sizes down here, there might be a little bit of crap in there. 
Uh, right, well, that might be doing it because that's about the depth that that quill went into before it got stuck. You got a round bastard file? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put a file down in there. Um, Let's see if I can just scrape it out with this. Uh, yeah, all right. Just give it a try. Is there a ridge or something in it? Yeah, it, it, it goes down just right here. Can you see my finger there? Yeah, yeah. That's where it drops down just there. All right, well, look, try something else for a minute. Um, clean that out. Make sure there's nothing in it. There's nothing in this part here. It's just the back, the back bit. Yeah, yeah, no, just make sure there's no metal or dust off the sandpaper or anything in it. Why? Eh? Yeah, all right, I don't think there is, but I put, a, I put a rag in there after that, and that's what I got out of it. Yeah, all right, we'll do it again just to make sure. Yeah. Right now, get your quill and screw the screw the screwed bit into the end of it. Well, that's tight. What are, you, what, what are you putting in there? What? What are, you, what are you putting in the end there? Good eye, Robert. Didn't you say put the thread in and screw the thread in? No, 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 no. Take that out of there. Screw that into the quill where it's supposed to go. Just put it in about three or four turns. Right, now insert that into the, no, other way round. Insert that into the, into the tail stock. The right way round. No, the right way round. That way. Right, put it in. Yeah. How's Right. Now, have you got the thread a bit all the way out the outside now? Have you got the, the handle end out? Yeah. Rightio. Yeah. Now, put your spindle lock in. Screw that in. And make sure it's sitting in the groove. Hey, go on, Robert. Yep. Right. Now, just loosen the spindle lock off so it's not tight. Right. Now, see if you can screw the tail stock back with the with where the handle would go, 
where the hand will go. Just keep pressure on that, on the face, otherwise it'll just disappear in. Is that as far as it goes? And that turns pretty easy. Yeah, no, see if it goes right back. Yeah. Is that as so if it goes back further? No, that's it. Right, okay. All right. Now, just don't now wind it out with the, the jigger, all right? Yeah. Well, you can push it out, actually. Right here, just slide it out now with your hands. Uh, take the spindle lock out. Yep. <laughs> Okay, right, now take your threaded piece out of the quill. Now get a cap full of oil. Yep. And take the rubber gloves off. So if I uh, periodically just put it on mute every now and then, that's when a chopper's going over, all right? Just yeah, that's all right. Now, you can put fresh gloves on if you like, but... Yeah, the no, no, the oil. The reason I tell you to take them off there is if you've got any metal bits or anything embedded in them. Yep, no, you're right. Good day, Blair. Hello. How are you going, Blair? Again. He didn't yep. chuck a wobbly. The, the computer chucked a wobbly. Oh, yeah, okay. well, when I threw my mask, it hit the power cord and knocked it out. Right. Now, get a finger full of oil and rub yeah. it down the threads. In that, on that, down the threads. Right, that's enough. Right, now assemble that up. Right out, that's far enough. Good. Right out. Now. Finger full of oil down the quill. Don't get any inside the taper. What? Don't get any inside the taper. Inside there? Inside there, yeah. Don't put any in there, all right? <laughs> Don't watch it. You better, you better leave now, quick. Right, smear oil down the outside of that. Hey Robert, how you doing? Ah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> right out now assemble that into the tail stock. Like that, you mean, or just like that. Oh, yeah, okay. no, like that. Right, put your spindle lock back in. Yep. Loose. Loose. Now slide that right back so you can get the hand wheel on.
Now, where the hand wheel seats against the edge of the lay, edge of the tail stock, just put a smear of oil around there. Slides in flush now. Yeah, good. No, not there. The other end, where the hand wheel goes. Right. Yeah, that's cool, mate. It's all good. <laughs> All right, all done. Okay, right, now put your hand wheel on and tighten the grub screw up. Now, it needs about one millimetre clearance between the end of the tail stock and the hand wheel with the quill pushed right back before you tighten the grub screw up. Got to have a little bit of free play there. Yep. Yeah. Right out. Put the grub screw in. Move the tail stock down a bit so I can see what you're doing. Yeah. All right. I was uh, just um uh got unstick the. That'll do. Good. That's yeah. it. Got to take my safety blanket off. Your security blanket? Yeah. Charlie Brown? That's it. That's what I was thinking of. Linus that has a security blanket, isn't it? Oh, I yeah, was referring... Out of, out of the cartoon, yeah. Yeah, I was referring to the whole cartoon series. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Like, my wife's nickname for me sometimes is Pig Pen. <laughs> Now, have you got that grub screw on the flat of the the shaft or not? The yeah, I've got it. I've got the the handle lined up. I'm just screwing the screw the grub screw in. Right out. Okay. Now a lot of people try and put it on the round one and then wonder why the hell it doesn't hold. No, I know where it needs to be. Yeah, good. Jeez, your memory's getting better. No, I just know that from other machines. <laughs> Moved. Yeah, don't do that, eh? And don't drop the don't drop the Allen key. It's not good. I put it. I put a, a red bit of tape on it, you know. Maybe so I can find it easier in the white shavings. <laughs> Make sure it's on there before I give it its final tighten. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. It should just have a little bit of movement there, that's all. Yeah. The only problem is it keeps sliding, so I've got to keep readjusting it. Well, push it in, push it right back, and then put your spindle lock in and hold it there. Now put your spindle lock on. Now you you're you probably moving the, the quill in and out. Push, push your quill right in with your finger. Yeah, I've got it now. It's all right. Sorry. Right, that'll do. That should be enough. Right, now try winding it in and out and see how it goes. Lovely, tell your mama. 
Beauty. So there's a bit of movement. Yeah, no, that's 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 because you didn't listen to what I said. What? Put that right back like that. Lock the quill, the spindle lock. Lock the spindle lock now. Right, loosen off the grub screw in the in the hand wheel. You shouldn't be able to turn that hand wheel at all. Right. Undo it and line it up with the flat. It's on the flat. It's on the flat? Right. Yeah. Now set a, set about a one millimetre gap between the end yeah. of the tail stock and the hand wheel. It's got to have a little bit of clearance to move backwards and forwards. Yeah, good day, Lewis. I know you're in and out like me. Right. Still has a... Anyway. Lock, lock your tail stock down. Right. Now just pull on the hand wheel backwards and forwards. That's perfect. Rightio. Good. That's good. Okay, all fixed. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Ooh, way to go, Jay. Now, <laughs> Robo was uh, the pilot. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to ask you, Lewis, how's the, how's the Reno going? Don't you just love pulling lath plaster off? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not fun. That's a dirty, filthy job. <laughs> you come out looking like the abominable snowman, I tell you. <laughs> oh, well, you're going pretty well then, Lewis. Carl, that was good live. Thanks. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you got to turn something. Just put it to I the did. I, I, turned, I turned the tail stock a thousand times. Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, how hot is it in the shed? It's not today. That's why it's done at my normal. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, same, uh, same, same over here. It's 20, 22 degrees at the moment, but raining, believe it or not. Like yesterday, we had 41. Today, 22. Raining. Ah, uh, you got to live dangerously, Lewis. Well, it's uh, 25 in my shed. Yeah, that's good weather, man. Yeah, and I got I got my fan blowing on the back of me, so it's not too bad at all. Yeah, I knew it had to have been comfortable for you. You're wearing black and. You don't wear black when it's hot. <laughs> it's the only decent cold shirt it's I've cold got. Cold out. Sorry? You wear black when it's cold out. You want to keep the infrared rays. Sometimes I just grab a t-shirt and put it on. I don't really consider what color it is when it's hot. I just... Ah, uh, geez, Jay, you should be getting like me and get fashion coordinated for the day, mate. I can't wear Wally every day, come on.
Yeah, I, I can relate to that, Lewis. I, I was putting a staircase in once and checked all the wiring and everything for where the new, the new post had to be mounted to the wall. Put the drill into the bloody thing. It lit up like it was like uh, Times Square. I tell you, Christmas. Jeez. <laughs> Burned out the drill. Even the electrician was surprised to see a wire down there. Oh, it's too big. What a bastard. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Either the big piece of wood or the small bands or... Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Did it uh, decide to ignite, did it, or just... Stay as as was. Oh, well, that's one bonus. This looks pretty ugly. Yeah, it's gnarly. Better turn it then. <laughs> I'll attempt to cut it with this band, so I don't know what's going to be right. <laughs> It's funny, I reckon that um, shredded newspaper when it's used as insulation, is, as long as it's packed in tight, it takes a bit to get to make it catch on fire actually. Well, I can understand it being fire retardant because if you try and burn a newspaper in a fire, that a proper newspaper without the sheets separated, it it looks it's hellishly hard to burn the whole paper. You've got to keep stirring it around all the time. How old's the house? I only ask how old is because I remember as a kid, my grandparents had shredded paper in their walls, but their house was built in the, well, it was built in the 20s, and uh, that's when they had it insulated. <coughs> the asbestos came in, but at World War II, that only went to the military, at least here in the States. Yeah, pretty much the same out here too. The uh, the uh, all the army barracks used to be all lined with asbestos. Yeah, they used it in submarines too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the lagging on all the pipes and everything was always asbestos too. Yeah. 
and it's still here it's legal as long as the plaster and it's it's not really a plaster but it isn't they have asbestos that they used to put on in in, in paper form or cloth form and wrap around pipes and then they coat it with a paint and as long as that paint special paint is still there and intact it's still legal to have but once you break that that outer wrapping it's illegal i love watching when they use that they uh, blow in the foam and it expands and then they just have a like a razor knife and cut go down the wall and it just makes a nice foam board and yeah i did that to my garage shop that where i live i got in the walls but didn't have enough for the ceiling so i had to put in the standard insulation up there insulation batting Yeah, it's pretty neat the way that blowing foam goes on. I love watching them do it. We used to uh, we used to use that uh, expanding foam for the for the uh, flotation in yachts and things. You had to be very careful that you got everything right. Happy birthday for yesterday, Amber. Uh, thank you, Sunday, hey, yeah. happy birthday, Amber. I'm sorry thank I missed you. it. <laughs> she won't show you, but I'm going to show you. You might not see it. You might not be able to see it. Look at that beautiful ply, isn't it? No, <laughs> yeah. no, she's done patterns on there. She just needs to burn them. Don't everyone speak at once. We're all waiting for you to hit your finger. Oh, yeah. I'm left-handed, <laughs> so you won't. Sorry. It's got a, it's got a split there, so I'm not going to put it dead center. Just off a little bit. Right, turn it around the other way, Joe. Yeah. Unless you're going to put the tenon on the, the other end. Oh, well, I thought that might make a nice base. That's right. Yeah, well. Doesn't matter. Don't bother me, no. I know you've always got a habit of putting the tenon on the tail stock end. I don't know why, but anyway. Oh, I've done it on the other end. You may be not paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, not all the time, but more often than not, the other end. But yes, well, that's that's what I'm going to try and get him to do, Robert. Yeah, Robert says, Are you going for one of those winged vase things where the two branches turn into the wings? Oh, yeah, bloody gave it away, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't bought any, any um, copper tubing to make any things up yet. As <laughs> I bang the pole, all right? I'll get in before anyone else does. <laughs> oh, look.
look at that tail stock that actually works. Whoopee. All oh, right. Who did, who did that? Yeah. And Lewis says he cured the... Lewis says he cured the first colour of dyed cactus juice I had soaked into a vase in the house oven when my wife went to work today. You, <laughs> you <laughs> hero, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so who who's owns the pants in that house, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy wife, happy life. That's dead right. <laughs> yeah. she didn't uh, she didn't smell it she didn't smell it so tomorrow i'm going to cure the second color that i did in the vacuum chamber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just blame it on harry you know that's all you gotta do really isn't it? no that was lewis not robert yeah it is no, okay. Lewis, Lewis was all Lewis right. was curing yeah, the thing. Right. Huh? Yeah, all right. I'll let you off just this once. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Conduct. Lewis says, "If I disappear, you'll know I was as lucky on the second cure." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see Roberts though? Yeah. I was making an oat cookie every morning before she woke up last week. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Harry was happy. No, I, long speed. I, I must I must admit I uh, I went for about two months before my wife woke up that I was cooking things in the microwave. Then she said, Right, that's it. She took hers out and went and bought a new one. Said this <laughs> one's yours out in the shed. <laughs> I mean, really, what's the worst that it could cook? You know, maybe a couple worms or ants or something like that. Uh, no, I, I must admit, I did tend to, I overcooked one one thing and it did it, it put a smell into the oven of it. Some of our some of our eucalypts can be uh, a little bit on the nose sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Eucalyptus is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis says, when I do that kind of thing, the Arrowsmith song, Living on the Edge, goes through my mind. <laughs> oh, it could be ACDC, Highway to Hell. When she finds out. Now, Jay, don't round down the whole thing. Just come from underneath where those branches are. Yeah, start from there. And Robert says he has a, the Mission Impossible theme song playing when he'll go and sneak and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need to have that as your ringtone for your wife. <laughs> living, living on the edge, Robert. Roughing gouge. Roughing gouge. Just watch out for flying bark. Yeah, it's there later, Lewis. Good night, Lewis. See you, Lewis. Thanks for coming in. Oh, that's cool. What are you giving away, Lewis? A 
one way a one week stay at the house renovation. <laughs> but bring your own hammer. That's it, yeah. Ah, uh, bird's eye bowl, that'll be cool. You got four minutes to enter, Blair. Four minutes. Uh oh. Is that on Facebook or on uh, uh, YouTube? Just D9, right? Is, uh, is that far enough? Too high or far enough? Or what? I'd go just turn it around the other side and give us a look for a minute. No, up up a bit higher. You want to catch no good me pointing with the mouse where you got to go to. Got to come up to the ridge on that one. Up to okay. the edge. There, yeah. yeah. You'll lose part of the other one but that's a It'll be fairly close, I reckon.
So Jay, I learned a little trick that maybe you might want to try when you're when you're roughing and you have your tool up against the rest and you've got your your roughing gouge put your hands maybe about that far away from the edge of that all of those chips are going to be hitting the edge of your hand rather than flipping up into your face and it they'll just kind of fall down rather than you know hold it like this hold it like that Try it. See if you like it. Mm. Like that. Yeah. 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 Some people like it. Some people don't. But I, I just found that. Um, That's cool. It, it helps. It's called an overhand grip. And the problem is that with that, with our harder timbers, you end up lacerating the side of your hand. But you can try it. See how it goes. control but it's just it's a bit awkward I'll, i may try it a bit more <laughs> the other yeah. the other thing is too that what happens is the flute builds up shavings in it and pushes you pushes your hand back well when i use a roughing gadget it does anyway <laughs> I, I, I didn't find it was doing that it, it was just bouncing off the side of my hand and um but yeah. you know, I, I, I do wear that glove so it, that's a bonus for me but still it, it Rather have it to not flip up into my face. Yeah. And I have to admit, I've been been bad lately. I I'm not using my face shield. I'm just using goggles, and I'm kind of liking that a little bit more. But I should be using my face shield. So, bad me. Yep. And mini get on live, live television. Hey, you know, I've got all the folks just here, and see, I'm, I'm not perfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. You're talking to me, remember? <laughs> sorry, God. Bob's gone to sleep. No, no I said sorry, sorry, God. <laughs> no, he, he just called you God, Robo. Yeah. <laughs> That's it too. <laughs> when I when I say oh God, he goes yes you called. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been following the chat, and the only way I can follow it is with my cell phone. And oh yeah, so it's down on this side. Yeah, another another way to do it, Blair, if you want to do it, is this is your chisel, and you got an underhand grip like that. Is put your thumb up in there, and it deflects it out to each side. And that's more efficient than actually putting your hand there. Good day, Mike. Welcome back again. Yes, it is. Perfect. Uh, Thank you, Mike. That's the problem. The shavings get caught here and just push the chisel away from the rest after a while. So I'll quite often put my thumb there, but most of the time I'll just spin it around like that and let the shavings deflect off to the side. Yeah, I, I do that too, but sometimes... It it still just kicks up and but yeah i'll have to try the thummy thing <laughs> the thummy thing yeah you're not playing a game now or texting you're just using a chisel <laughs> oh don't use your thumbs for this one oh. this is um peppercorn too yeah, have you got it? Have you got it? Are you sure it's peppercorn? He's not sneezing. 
<laughs> Sounds like a burrow. Yeah. Huh? Sounds like a burrow. A mule, in other words. Donkey, jackass. Yeah. Yeah, it's peppercorn. Bark looks wrong on it. Don't judge the bark, man. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> mm, it was in the peppercorn pile, so. And it's slightly spalted and stuff, so. Yeah, okay. It's, All right. it's the only wood that I've got that's spalted. Not buying that cheap shit super glue anymore. <laughs> uh, I buy, I buy like one packet of these, and you get two tubes in there, and it lasts me twice, three times as long as three or four packets of those six pack ones that I was buying. Yeah. And it's thick; it's not runny. Is that just uh, like a uh, cheap one, Blair? Yeah. I think it's almost the same stuff that you used to use. Yeah. And it does okay. Yeah. Then I just seem to be using on. a lot of it sometimes. Sorry well, I'm, that. I'm not we going to get to our club. I'm not going to go and get what I use. I use Loctite or Starbond. <laughs> yeah, hey. I use Starbond. <laughs> Starbond's expensive. Yeah, I bet. Loctite's dearer. I'm just going to grab a drink. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to play around with some of that Starbond stuff, especially the colors and, and all of that. But too expensive. We buy it by the case for our club members, and it's pretty cheap that way. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, if you're going to buy in bulk, you know, brings the price per unit down. It's about $6, $5. Is that with the accelerator? No, that's for the, the, the star bond itself. Mm. But that's by the, what is it, 144 growth. Is that a, is that a hundred and forty four of gross, Bob? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like six or half a dozen. <laughs> a baker's dozen. That's a that's the one nice thing about having a big club. We can buy stuff cheaper. We so get, keep going uh, on that or what? Sorry, Doctor Bob. Yeah, we get the uh, coating to, uh, I forget who makes it, but the white junk you coat wood with. Uh, and uh, we get it. Last I knew, we were getting, a, we got a 55 gallon barrel and then used a hand pump on top, crank pump, to sell it by the gallon at $2 a gallon. It wasn't bad. And if you bring your own milk bottle clean, they even say <laughs> you get it for a few cents less. All right. Um, might as well put the tenner on it now, huh? Probably a good idea. Oops. Oh, maybe not. I just found another part. I wouldn't worry about filling that one up yet. Uh -huh. Well, Cindy's got her program is this, what, that Sunday or Saturday, the second one for the month. Well, they've, they've got the, the, uh, the big thing that's going this Saturday with all of the different wood turners and glass blowers and yeah, yeah, the virtual craft working. That's a huge 
Let me look at my calendar. But she had scheduled this quite a while ago. No, not a part session. You can use that, or you, you can go in with a parting tool. I'd probably go in with a bowl gouge or a spindle gouge first to get the end level, and then work it out from there. It's fairly off-centered cut, so. No, which end are you putting the tenon on? Oh, camel. Yeah, do it far end. So you, you, say, you say to me, why don't I do it at the headstock? No. You ask me why I'm doing no. it at the headstock. No, 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 no. That's not what I said at all. Go back you're, to going to, you're going to put that in with that, that part there in the tailstock. And I said, no, reverse it round because you always put the tenon. You always put the tenon in on the tailstock end. Yeah. So you're going to put the tenon on the tail stock end. So, yeah. It makes the most sense if you're going to make it a bird's mouth based. Yeah, but it just. All right. I'll, I will rewind it back later and have a listen, but I'm pretty sure you can explain <laughs> why do I do it at the tail stock end. You can do that, and you'll see that I said put the tenon on the tail stock end. And you said, oh, quite often, I occasionally put it on the headstock end. And I said, yeah, but very rarely. Yeah, Friday's DWAG out of England, and then hers is Saturday. She had that scheduled back in December. This one's a uh, two-part. There's that many things going on on the web these days, it's hard to keep up with them all. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the times are up the, up the spout for us because the lunchtime lives are on at midnight when they come out of England. And even the, tea, even the nighttime ones are on about 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning as well. Well, we appreciate you attending ours. There's been a lot of co positive comments about that. Ah, I actually enjoy going in there, Bob. Thank you. you. Got an we're, we're, we're an interesting group and very friendly. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't managed to upset anybody yet, I don't think. <laughs> no. And the thing is, you can use the uh, Facebook Messenger and get a hold of most of them on it with video calls. Yeah. That is terrible. Oh, you're telling me it does. Is that, is that slightly rotten there on this it's bit, side? It's a bit punky. Yeah. Yeah. Just My get your get your fingernail get your fingernail, Joe, and just see how soft it actually is. It's hard. Oh, well, that's all right. Then we'll form your tenon there. That should be all right. That's it. Doesn't need to be bigger. No, that should be all right. As long as it as long as it's a two inch, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to jump out of here. I don't want to, but. I got a couple of teenagers to make sure they get in bed before midnight because school's yeah. tomorrow at 8. Thank you very uh, much for coming in, Dr. Good night, Bob. Good day, Yarpy. How are you? See you, Doc. How you going, Yarpy? Hey, Yarpy. You missed the most exciting part, Yuppie. <laughs> the last the hour and a half before I started doing this. <laughs> you better go back and watch it. You missed heaps. <laughs> All right. So is there anything else that I need to do to this?
No, not really. I'm just I'm worried how it's going to hold in the chuck. Or that's all. But oh well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, I would. So I might sand it then, or actually get some of these marks out here. And... Well, I'd do it when you turn it round, actually. Look, Mum, no hands. Woohoo! Mm. That's the good end, though. Yeah. Does your drive spur have like sides on it? On the on the shaft? Nah. Oh. Uh, or is it just the, it's just a normal? It's just a normal four prong drives for. Gotcha. Standard See, I, on my drive spur, I actually have like little things on it, so I can just put it in the chuck and then tighten up the chuck. Okay. What was that? Uh, what was that rattle made out of? All right. Good night, Robert. See you, Robert. Thanks for dropping in. You did 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 good today. See you later, Robert. Thanks for stopping by. One of these days I'll be able to do that. Get up and not have to go to work. Just go out to the shop and play. Oh, look at that. He can tighten the tail stock. Whoa. Uh, amazing. get to a point where it starts crushing it later. Hey, uh, that's what I'm worried about. I, that's what I mean. I reckon it's may not be strong enough to hold. It's not cracking or creaking or making any noises. Yeah, but a soft spot there it could rip it out of the jaws. Yeah, for the weight on the end anyway. Yeah. Well it's flush up against the Okay. I've got it up tight, but not as tight as it can go. All right, now leave your tail sock in place and just flatten off the top of that. This. This bit here. Yeah, flatten it. Yeah, yeah, I had to retrain him though, Yarpy. Huh? I'll read the, read the buddy comment out then. <laughs> Seems like he still remembers how to use the tail stock. 
No, you need the tool rest around to the side, Joe. So yeah. put the short, short one in. And use the bowl gouge. This is going to get bouncy. Sorry? I said this is going to get bouncy. Oh, that should be all right. It's right for you. <laughs> It's a bark flying around hitting the back of my shed. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a bird landing on the roof. It's going to be like a bird's mouth vase kind of a thing. Hopefully. Yeah. Just a fraction more, I reckon. Let's get that bit there. Yeah. It's going to be arty farty anyway, whatever it is.
bit more? Uh, hard to say. It's going to be very thin on this side. I know. Yeah, it's not going to have much of a hole down it. But so do, do that, I want to cut that off and just recenter it a little bit? No, now that it's in the chuck, you can't really do that. Um, like I said, this is going to be a real arty farty one. I'd, I'd drill a hole down through it now anyway and yeah. just see how it goes, all right? Just see if you can level that off a little bit so as the drill gets on there. Yeah, like, that's Yeah. <laughs> All right, cup of tea time again. Cup of. Yep. Are uh, you learning Aussie? Yeah. It's cup of time. Yeah, cup of. Jay, you could probably just take that burr off with the Forstner. That's the problem when your uh, on-off switch is down that end of the lathe and you're leaning up against it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, look, it stops. It's like, uh, oh, you dumbass, you're leaning <laughs> on it. <laughs> Either that or you can take that to the bandsaw and cut that little nub off. Yeah. Um, but I bet Forstner will just take it right off. I don't want to take it off the chunk. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Or hey, you can get a nifty little saw like that. Yep. <laughs> headphones on your own <laughs> people with headphones on it when i when i blow the dust off of stuff it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> all right 
the hell? Uh, Rob, I'm going to tell me you're dipping Ritz in your tea. Sorry? You're not dipping Ritz in your tea, are you? Not, not. That'd be gross, man. Oh, yeah. I don't, dip, I don't dunk these. Need a proper biscuit. Get out of here. Well, lock your lock your tile stock down as well. Fucking hell! Excuse the French, but it's uh, yeah. Now that it's been now that it's been cleaned out, things are fitting properly. And now that it's been cleaned out, things are moving. It's moved. It's moved from the the, the one mil gap that it had. That's for damn sure. That's not good. No, right. Well, that little grub screw needs tightening again. I tightened it with a pair of pliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Well, I wasn't jumping in your throat. I'm just saying. I tightened it with a pair of pliers. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Meant. I mean, I, I bought a, a five dollar Allen key set <laughs> yeah. to use to use one Allen key. <laughs> you know what? I I can't tell you how many sets I have. <laughs> I forget where they're at, or I lose two of them, or you know, it's uh, you lose the exact one you need. Yeah. Never use the others. <laughs> Too big, you reckon? <laughs> I think it might be, eh? No, it gives a look. That's probably going for. Do we to move the camera? No. No, that'll be alright. If it starts smoking, go down to a smaller size, whatever. Turn the speed up, eh? No? No one's listening? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Well, you can, you can actually with that bit, but I'll try it at that speed first. How does it feel to be able to drill holes again, Joy? What? How's it feel to be able to drill holes again? Flabbergasting. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, you've got to be careful now that because you can wind the tail stock back, it'll self-eject the... Yep, that's what it did. Yeah. yeah. Hello, somebody's got a... Somebody's got well, something on. Well, Amber's had music on for about an hour. If you're only just hearing it, then that's just bad luck for you. No, 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 I'm, I'm hearing me. Oh, okay. Stop yelling. I'm not yelling. <laughs> well, you just toned your voice. If you really want me to yell, I can yell. Yeah, but then you'll just be hearing yourself, so unless you want mm. to hear yourself twice. Oh, I'll take that back. You must probably do. No, it hasn't happened before, that's all. Yeah, that was weird. Mama will be home soon. Puff the magic dragon. <laughs> yep. Puppy. Sounds like Mama's home. about as far as you can go.
in his mooch. Oh, <laughs> hello, Tammy. Hello. Hello, Tammy. Spend some time with Tam. So. Okay, no worries, Blair. Thanks for coming in. Glad you got it fixed, Jay. Yeah, no, cheers. And cheers. oh, sorry, hang on, what? Oh, I was about to say something, but it doesn't matter. Ooh. Oh, I feel it, Dick. Cheeky monkey. Sorry? Uh, just it jumped out ever so slightly. Yeah, I think you're going to. I think you're going to have trouble with it. Yeah, that's right. I'll just persist with it. I'm going to have to go shortly. I've got a customer turning up shortly. Yep. Right. Thanks for your help. That's all right. Glad we got that tail stock fixed. Yes. Makes life a lot easier. Yes, makes it a little bit more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that one came through the lounge room. Yeah. Freight train. Yeah. Um, come out to this one here. Yeah, I'd, it doesn't matter if it's got a gap around it. Like I said, this one's going to be a bit arty farty. It's definitely going to have a gap here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just uh, do what you have to do. Yep. Now, it's going to be interesting cutting that centre thing out, like enlarging the hole there. You're going to have to be careful because you've got side grain and end grain, all right? All right. It's going to be going to be very peculiar, so... Yeah, Take your bit, time with it. I was wondering yeah. if this was even doing much, but it, yeah. It's getting blunt probably too. So. Well, it's not. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you later on, Jay. See you right. later, Yarp, if you're still in there. And anybody else that's sitting on the side. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you happy? <laughs>
<laughs> it's all rest and help, wasn't it? Appreciate you coming in, Yappy. Have a good day. We'll let that set for a little bit. Right, so it's getting. Uh, I thought this side was gonna get. It was gonna. It's, it's cutting out the most this side, but this side is. This is definitely the thinnest. This this whole chunk here. That's, that's what I kind of need to keep an eye on. I think right now. I'm gonna get a bit of glue in there. That's not gonna last five seconds. Thank you. 
Just going to give that a couple of minutes to uh, cure a little bit.
Now I'm very glad I glued that that section up there. That would have gone flying ages ago. It's, it's quite thin in there.
I'll be out. Alright folks, um appreciate everyone for coming in. Today. I'm gonna knock it on the head now and come back tomorrow. So sure it's gonna it's just gonna flake away there eventually, so See us out with that. Right, uh, take it easy. Have a good day, night. Wherever you are, wherever you're doing.